So are you looking for the best gift for the artist in your life this holiday season? Buying for an artist can be challenging. You may not know what they like, what their medium is, and even what their skill level is. So today I picked 15 products that I thought that whether or not the person's a starting artist or an advanced artist would really enjoy to be given as a gift this holiday season. So the first product that I want to show you was this Helix Circle and Angle Maker. And what's neat about the Circle and Angle Maker is it does make circles up to four inches and pretty much any size that you're looking for, plus it has an ability to do angles. If you look at the outside rim of this circle and angle maker, it actually has degrees. So if you have a person in your life who loves doing mandalas, this is going to simplify their lives significantly. I've had so many people comment that making mandalas after using this tool was so much simpler. So whether or not the person is drawing or uh, just creating circles in their work, this is a fantastic tool that I think everyone should have. So the second thing I think every artist should have is either some iridescent interference inks or paints. If you are working more in an art journal or you like to work more on cards or other smaller creative works or you like working specifically in ink, these Lisa Horton Crafts stamp pads are really amazing. So what's really neat about these interference inks is they go on a different color on white paper versus black paper. So for example, this is both from this stamp pad. So you can see that I have on the black, it's turned purple. On the white, it's been blue, but then I also added in a little bit of this right mango color just to add a little bit of shimmer to this. And what's neat about these ones is that you get a little bit of the purple sheen even in the blue, and in the purple, you almost get a tiny bit of a blue sheen in there sometimes too. So depending on what you're looking to do, these are not only a versatile ink where you have several colors on one stamp pad, but also the fact that they do give you very different looks on black and white. But if you find the person you're buying for doesn't usually use inks, then try the golden interference paints. These interference paints have a bit of a color flipping and metallic look to them. So they're a really fun medium, especially if you're looking for something different to buy someone this Christmas. So the next art product I want to show you are these Technolo RGB pencils. So these pencils, they have colored wood on the outside and that's to indicate what color they are. But what is amazing about these pencils is that they draw completely like graphite. So you can use them like a straight graphite pencil in your creative projects. But when you hit them with a little bit of water, they will either turn more of a red, blue, green, or black. This is my sample book to show you how these graphite pencils work. So the sample, you start with graphite that basically looks like graphite. The moment I start touching with water and blending out that line, you can see how deep the color gets. Depending on which pencil you have, you have a lot of different variation in color. So this is a pencil where the look is deceiving. It looks very basic, but once you get into it, it is one of the most fascinating pencils that you can use in your sketching and in your art. And one gift I think every artist could use is watercolor paints, especially if they love watercolor. So I have both my full palette here as well as my travel palette. So we'll talk about the travel palette first. So this one's a Koi watercolor pocket filled sketch box. And so what's nice about it, it has the loop on the back so you can hold it in place with your finger. It has palettes in here that you can basically set out. It has sponges so that you can keep your brush clean, and it has a whole set of watercolors. This also usually comes with a water brush. I pulled that brush for now just because I've been using it on other projects in other ways, but I usually take this thing with me everywhere when I am on vacation. So I think that if you have someone who is interested in doing watercolor, this is a good choice. The quality of the paints is pretty good. If you end up running out of the pans inside, you can always refill them with another color. So when choosing paints for an uh, artist who's been working in watercolor for a while, I would suggest getting them a set of tubes. Um, that way, with tubes, the nice thing is, is you can fill a palette multiple times with them, and they always have extra color they can use. And that means they can also put it into any container that they want. But my palette here actually has a range of watercolors, from some Winsor Newton Cotton watercolors, which are more of a student grade watercolor. I also have some ones from Daniel Smith, Winsor Newton's Professional Line, Schmincke, and Graham. There's a lot of beautiful watercolors out there. So by being able to choose a few and maybe provide them a palette if they're new, or being able to buy a set of professional watercolors, uh, that's always a good way to go. If you're looking for someone who wants more of a student grade watercolor, I would stick to 12 or 24 colors of the Winsor Newton Cotman watercolors, which I have linked below in the description. And again, you can always do well with the Koi watercolor sketch box. This is a really great way and one of the first ways that I started exploring watercolors on my own. If you have someone who likes to use paints and maybe does a little bit of art journaling or any sort of mixed media work, I would highly suggest 
some paint pens. This is a lot of paint pens. Uh, I have a fairly large collection of different paint pens that I've picked up over the years. And if you want to see my full review of paint pens from more expensive paint pens review and also a cheaper paint pens review, I have it in the description below and the card above. So I would say my favorite watercolor pen for sure is the Uni Posca pens. These come in a range of colors, a range of nibs, a range of thicknesses. These are fantastic for really any artist for any sort of work that they do, whether or not that's doodling, art journaling, uh, some more serious painting and looking for adding in some details. These are fantastic to use. They are with a really high pigmented paint. If you're looking for a uh, paint pen that for gold or silver or white, I would do the Pentouch paint pens. So these are fantastic pens for using in any art project. They show up beautifully. I've used them on alcohol inks. I've used them on acrylic paint. I've used them on so many mediums and they work beautifully. So another fantastic gift is the tabletop easel. So what's nice about these easels is that they can sit on any tabletop and you can basically angle them as high or low as you want. So you can have them at a very slight angle or you can have them fully vertical. Uh, this is a smaller one that I purchased just because I had a larger one, which I'll also show you. It was a little bit too big for my desk space, but I find that this particular size is a really good one. And again, I'll link it below the exact product this is, uh, just because of the fact that it will fit on your workspace and still give you room for your paints. So this is the first tabletop easel that I purchased. And you can see it's massive. I love it. Um, I still use it a lot of the time, but it is massive. And so I would suggest getting maybe a smaller tabletop easel. This one I think can fit like a, a very large painting on it, which is great, especially if you're starting out and you don't want to have a full easel. If you have a large tabletop space, this is a great choice. But I prefer the other one just because it's a little bit smaller. And you might ask yourself, why would you want to bother with an easel? Uh, one thing that I've realized from art journaling is that I want to try to keep my hands out of the paint as much as I can. So being able to pop it up on an easel, just putting my book on the ledge there. Um, it's a really nice way of being able to control my paint and keep my hands out of my work. It's also nice to be able to take a step back and be able to look at your work and be able to see if it has the colors, the contrast that you're looking for. But the main reason I have one of these is because I've started running into being hunched over my work all the time has been really bad for my back. And so what I find is even when I'm drawing, I will use a board like this. But what I often do is I only have it up on a very small angle in the same way that a drafting board would work. And that way, just because of the angle, I can still have the control, but at the same time, I'm not hurting my back. I'm ending up with better posture. My hands don't go numb. I don't have a lot of the back issues I was running into when I was painting a lot. So that's actually why I like to paint where I can on a full-sized easel. But sometimes when I'm working in the art journal, I like being able to have this as a really good option. So if you have a friend who's an artist who likes to paint outside or goes to a lot of classes, the paintbrush wrap is the way to go. So this one I just purchased at my art store a couple years ago and I use it all the time. So this is one that I just have a variety of different brushes in. And what's nice about it is there's room for really large brushes and really small brushes. And so you can fit a lot of brushes into one of these wraps. And what's nice about it is because of the space on top, none of your bristles get damaged. And because you're rolling it, again, it's protecting those bristles. And with this one, it has a nice little Velcro attachment here. And then I basically pop it in my bag and then I don't have to worry about my brushes being damaged. And so another thing that I've used more recently is a brush rest. And so you can get them in not very pretty ones like this, or you can get ones like this that have beautiful color and a little bit of nice texture on them. And I use these mostly for watercolor brushes. So the idea is that once you're done with your watercolor brush and because you want to protect those bristles as much as possible, you're leaning your brush against it and it's a brush rest. This means they don't roll off. It means you don't damage your bristles and it just keeps uh, all your brushes to a nice point. This is also great to use when you're using acrylic brushes with fine points, just because again, it protects those brushes, just keeps them off the ground a little bit and just helps them from rolling off of your workspace. So I would suggest everyone have a good art journal, whether or not you are just sketchbooking for ideas to add onto your canvas work, whether or not you are a more serious art journalist or it's just a place for you to do some creative play, a good journal goes a long way. The one that I would suggest for anyone doing watercolor work is the Strathmore 400 journals. These ones have really thick pages. They look beautiful. They don't warp or bend much. Uh, they take water really, really well. And I think these are just a beautiful sketchbook that make a really great gift. And then if you're looking for something that's a little bit more mixed media, I would suggest either the nature sketch 
or the Strathmore Visual Art Journal. The Nature Sketch is more of a mixed media paper. The Nature Art Journal is a Bristol paper. Really, the difference between them isn't that different. They're both very smooth paper. You can use them for drawing. I often use this one for a lot of my pen and ink work. I really like that my dip pen doesn't catch on any of the surface, but it's also nice because I can add wet mediums like watercolor and still have it work really well in this journal. So the Bristol paper is a very smooth paper that's great for writing, but will also take paint and will also take inks really, really well. And so I've added in quite a bit of wet medium and I haven't had any problems with this. So that's a really good sign when you're using a journal. Those are the three that I would really suggest. If you know someone who loves printmaking or enjoys adding in their own doodles or their own papers into their artwork or into collage, or even if you're working with someone who's a collage artist, get them a jelly plate. A jelly plate is a fantastic tool for any artist. I've had these ones for more than 10 years. They still work amazingly well. It's something of an investment. So if you give this to someone as a gift, it's a gift that will keep on giving for a really, really long time. And so you can get them in small sizes like five by seven, eight by 10. You can also get them in these really teeny ones. I have a collection of a hexagon and oval ones and square ones and I even have triangles and other shapes. The two brands I've used consistently and have gotten really good results with are the Gel Press and the Jelly Arts printing plates. So go for these ones. They are a little bit more expensive, but they are worth the money and they will last a very, very long time. And if you'd like to see how these work before you maybe purchase one, check out my whole collection of jelly print videos below. Uh, that is a really good place to start if you're new to gel printing. So if you're buying for a collage artist or anyone who loves paper, I would suggest books of collage elements and tissue paper. So books of collage elements, I've actually asked for stuff for myself for Christmas. I will add some links below on the ones that I'm looking at, but basically the idea of the collage books is a lot of it is copyright free, license free, artwork that you can basically use in your pieces and use in your art journals and your junk journals. And it's a really fantastic way of being able to get a lot of different images that you not normally have to dig through a lot of stuff online to find ones that you could actually use. The other thing is tissue paper. I have some of this Tim Holtz tissue paper. You can usually get this stuff in rolls. I don't think you can even get these musical notes anymore. I think they've gone out of production, but every season they seem to have a new set of tissue papers that are amazing to use. These are really strong and work well on any project. You can also just pick up tissue paper wherever. Um, as an artist, I'm picking up tissue paper everywhere I go, but there are lots of beautiful collections of tissue paper you can find online. And the other thing you can do is get some of these printed tissue papers uh, from Dina Wakely. So she has a whole bunch of different faces. Uh, these ones are also in black and in white and you have a lot of different options for imagery. This one here is more shapes, like it has some cathedrals and some writing. These packages have 20 sheets each, so it's really nice for being able to have a lot of images you can choose from. And if you'd like to see a project using the black and white tissue paper, again, check out the card above or the link below. I've included a video that I did a while back that people have really enjoyed about how to use black tissue paper in their projects. So I'm always on the hunt for the perfect black permanent pen. And I think that any artist should have a nice black permanent pen, especially if they like to do pen and ink work, if they like to sketch, um, if they like to be able to draw or doodle. I love the Sakura Micron pens. I also have these Microperm Sakura pens that are a little bit more permanent than the Microns. The Microns will not bleed, but these ones are just a little bit more permanent when I tested them. I also love the Wins, uh, the Faber-Castell pit pens. They are a really good option for being able to draw with. I use these pretty much every week in my sketchbooks. And lastly, I would suggest this Placer fountain pen. This fountain pen has a really strong nib. I've actually filled it with carbon ink. These don't come with carbon ink. I've actually had to go and find carbon ink cartridges. And what's nice about these pens is that when I was reading reviews on them, people were like, they're easy to clean, they don't clog, and I've gone through multiple sets of ink with this, and that is the case. It's very hard to find a permanent ink for a fountain pen. And I have some beautiful Lamy pens, but I'm a little bit worried I'm gonna ruin them. So that's why I got the Placer. It's a little bit less expensive, I can add carbon ink to it. If I ruin it, it's okay. But what I like about this nib is that if I'm writing on surfaces that maybe haven't fully dried, like acrylic paint, unlike some of the pit pens where the nibs can get wrecked, uh, these ones always work really, really well. So uh, these are the three that I use all the time in my art. So I just want to suggest if you're looking for a permanent pen, these are some options. I've also included uh, another link 
to a video that I did a while back about choosing the best permanent pen where I actually do a comparison of all the permanent pens I own. That is a good video to check out if you want to really do a deep dive into buying the right permanent pen. A very tiny gift that makes the perfect stocking stuffer is a Faber-Castell kneaded eraser. And uh, a lot of people don't know what a kneaded eraser is or how to use it. And so I started using these in my class with my students and every time I pull it apart, they would go, what in the world is that thing? And so what's nice about these erasers is not only are they self-cleaning, so every time you need them, any graphite or anything that you erase with get, basically gets moved into the eraser and then it comes out clean again so that you can use it again on another surface. What's nice about these is you can roll them. So if you want to remove a little bit of graphite you're off your whole entire surface, you can roll them. You can make them into really tiny spots so that you can clean up little areas. They are a fantastic eraser. I used to use a lot of different erasers. Now, since I've gotten the needed eraser, it's the only eraser I use. So every time I show this to children, they think it's the best thing and I always want to take it away from me. And I find that even as a cathartic thing that I play with as I sketch or I work, being able to play around with this really does make my day. <laughs> so if you know someone who enjoys watercolor pigments or just enjoys watercolor in general, try these Brusho Crystal Colors. These are a powder pigment that when wetted gives a really beautiful color. And what's nice about these is because they are in a crystal form, it gives you a lot more options for creative play. And what's really neat about each one of these is that they start off with a few colors together. So for example, the olive green, you can see has a little bit of red, has a little bit of blue. All together when it's mixed in, you're gonna get more of this olive green color, but when you only spritz with a little bit of water, you end up with a lot of different color. You can see the same with the lime green, the sea green, um, all of these ones. So what's neat about them is because of the way they've mixed these crystals, it's not one crystal color, it's several crystal colors in one. And so these are fantastic because you can spritz them and add them over stencils. You can mix them and turn them into just a watercolor pigment. So if you know someone who likes to play with a little bit of mixed media and maybe you also want to do a little bit of watercolor, this isn't a bad choice just because you have multiple ways you can use this medium and it's just one little container. And again, I've included another video below about how to use Brusho Crystal Colors. I'm using all of the products that I use all the time and so you'll probably notice that almost everything has a link to another video or playlist just because I use so much of this and I wanted to share the information for you so that as you buy, you know for sure what you're getting. One of the things that I have a lot of are watercolor markers. I have everything from very inexpensive Crayola markers that are water soluble. I also have a lot of these Tombow markers. I also have a really nice collection of these graphics markers and there's a few spots in there just because I was taking them out to sketch with. But these are a fantastic marker. What's nice about them is they can be used um, with a brush and be used to be blended out with a little bit of water. Um, they can also be used as more of a marker and you'll be able to use them on almost any surface. And so if you're interested in seeing my full review and comparison between a lot of different markers, I've included it in the link below as well. But I would say that the Aquapen graphics are my favorites and the Tombow's being a very close second. And then again, if you're on a real budget and you don't have a ton of money to play with, I would say that the Crayola markers are a really good choice too. They won't be as pigmented, but they will definitely get the job done. So the last thing I wanna talk about is the color wheel. The color wheel is a fantastic tool for understanding color relationships, for helping you choose colors and understand how everything can work together. Uh, usually you can get them in much smaller sizes. You can get ones that will fit nicely into a stocking. I just happen to be using them in so many projects that they're somewhere in my art space. You can get them in large and small sizes. So I think this is a tool that every artist can definitely use. But So if you've never used a color wheel and you're not sure how you would use it, in your creative practice, uh, check out the link below there. I have a video where I went over how I apply color and how I use the relationships on a color wheel specifically in a lot of my different projects. So that's my list of 15. I could have kept adding to it. There's so many interesting things in my art space that I would love to share with you. But I thought these 15 are probably some of the more interesting ones I thought would be really helpful and useful. And if you have any questions about anything that I've shared today, please leave a comment below. I'd love to be able to get back to you and try to help you as you're trying to figure out what the right product is for you, for your art practice, or for the person that you're looking to buy for. And if you are familiar with a lot of these products and you think I've missed out something that's important, leave a comment below. Oh, I'd love to know what you think should be on this top 15 things for gifts for artists. So I have included all the products that I've shared today in the description below. Those links do include affiliate links 
And what that means is that anytime you purchase from those links, I do get a small commission, but at no additional cost to you. And that's just a really fantastic way that you can support my channel. And just thank you so much for your support. If you're looking for products that would be really of interest to people who are into watercolor or acrylic painting, click here. This is one that I did a little while back about some of the best watercolor and acrylic products that I like to use. So I'll see you in the next video.